Welcome everyone to the Illinois, Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen at any point to type questions to our presenters. Your camera and microphone are off so our panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so please sign up for more. And this session is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com backslash Illinois. And with that, I will turn it over to our first presenter, EHL. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. There, um, there we go. Life is good. Well, welcome everybody. My name is Daniel Flores and I'm one of the uh, recruitment officers for EHL. Uh, we go by a three, two, one model and the three is actually what's on your screen right now. We offer three locations to complete our program. On the left-hand side is gonna be Lausanne, Switzerland in the French speaking part. In the middle is Passug, Switzerland in the Swiss German speaking part. And on the right is Singapore. First thing to note, don't freak out. Program is taught entirely in English. You do not need to know the local language. Now, number two, the two and the three, two, one model stands for the different pathways. We have an academic and a professional pathway. One of them is more focused on culinary arts, which is the professional, and the other one is focused more on business. So depending on what your career trajectory is going to be, one may be better fit than the other. And the one in the three, two, one model stands for the amount of degrees that we offer. We offer one. It's a bachelor's of science in international hospitality management. So at least with the background of EHL, we did start off as the world's first hotel school in 1893, and we eventually transitioned to becoming ranked as the world's number one hospitality and leisure management program, now three years in a row. Uh, to explain the difference, really, it's about hospitality encompasses hotels and restaurants, but hospitality is truly business. Anything you could do with a business degree, you could do with hospitality. So I want everybody to remember, hospitality is not just hotels and restaurants. Once again, hospitality is not just hotels and restaurants. And also when you look at our student demographics in 3,300 total students, 2,900 are in our undergrad program and they come from 120 plus nationalities, which is extremely diverse. About from the American perspective, about 95% of the entire student body is international. 84% uh, of our students know three or more languages. It's not to intimidate you, but the fact is you're actually going to be learning language as part of our curriculum. Uh, we are accredited by the US and Swiss government. So what that means for you is when you graduate, you can work and continue your education worldwide. So the world becomes your oyster. If you're looking for a global career, definitely recommend staying abroad. And you'll be hearing a kid in the background for your, uh, for your listening entertainment. We are also the first and only school with a Michelin star training restaurant. So if you love food, you get to cook it, prepare it and eat it. Now, as far as the different locations, I'm gonna focus on two today. One of them is actually gonna be the Lausanne campus, which is right behind me and what's on your screen. Quintessential European experience where in a three hour flight from Geneva, you're in up to 36 different countries, not cities, not states, countries. So if you want to go to Spain over the weekend, do it. Go to Greece, do it. Go to Italy, do it. That's a way for you to really get that extra level for your college experience. It's not something that's typical that you're going to find in many other places around the world. At uh, the campus itself, we have three brand new apartment, or sorry, two brand new apartment buildings and three brand new dorms. What's on your screen is actually one of the dorms plus our sports facility. We're going to be having an indoor gym, indoor pool, indoor spa, College life is rough, you need your mani pedis. boom, you get it right on campus. Uh, very modern, very minimalistic, and also very sustainable because that's very big in Swiss culture. Also, fun fact, this is our dress code. We wear suits every single day. It's to prepare you for the real world. Now, if you're looking for a different experience, we also have our campus in Singapore. Very different, 180 from Europe. As far as the climate, we're closer to the equator here, so a lot more hot, humid but then also still very international. Uh, Singapore, Singapore is full of expats. So you get a multicultural experience on campus and off campus. And it also is the business hub of Asia. So if you're looking to potentially get a job within the Asian market or at least understand Asian culture, this is a way for you to get easy access to that. Now, as far as our bachelor's program, it is four years. 
And embedded in those four years is one year of internship. We offer two six-month internships and we offer them all over the world. The first six months of the program, we're switching our courses every single week, making chocolates, making pastries, drinking wine, making cocktails, to cleaning beds, cleaning toilets, folding laundry, uh, learning French, visiting and eating at a three Michelin star restaurant. This is all what we prepare you for because service is not something you read about in a book. You have to give it, experience it, feel it, create it. And the only way you do that is by using your hands. So that's what you'll be doing for four years at EHL. Uh, you also have three, three semesters of business courses, hospitality courses, and language courses. We offer German, French, Russian, Mandarin, Spanish. When you finish the program, you actually finish off being a consultant. You have four options. You solve a problem for a company either by yourself, with up to five other people. You decide, hey, I actually want to develop my own business plan. We have a startup incubator on campus that can help you do that. Or number four, you do a research thesis. After this, you present this to your entire graduating class. This is what leads us to have 96% of our students get a job within six months of graduation. And that's the highest of any school offering this program. Once again, not just hotels and restaurants. 47% of our alumni go into work in the traditional, what we think hospitality is fields, but this is a business degree, banking, accounting, NGOs, education, healthcare, health and beauty, luxury goods, anything where you work with people, this degree will prepare you for that. To make it even more easy on yourself, if you hate people, this is a terrible option for you because you're constantly around people. But if you love to be around people, you can make a career out of being yourself. And with our alumni network, we have over 30,000 alumni working in over 150 countries. So just once again, to reiterate the global careers. Now to illustrate, these are all companies hiring our students, whether it's for full-time or part-time employment uh, or internships. Once again, not just hotels and restaurants, you have luxury goods, banking, airlines, health and beauty, Swiss economic review. Real briefly, uh, it's a three-phase admissions process. You can find us on Common App or you can apply on our institutional website. We also accept FAFSA and we do have private funding. For any questions, this is my contact information and thank you so much for stopping by today. Thank you so much. Our next presenter is Duke Kunshan University. Hello everyone, I'm just pulling up my PowerPoint here. Hopefully everyone can see it at this point. Give me just a moment. All right, well, welcome everyone. My name is Lori Bregner and I'm a Global Recruitment Officer with Duke Kunshan University. Um, thank you for that great presentation from EHL. We are also an international school. So as you may tell by the Chinese characters here on my first slide, we are a Chinese university, but we're also a partnership with Duke University. So many of you probably recognize um, the iconic Duke University campus here with the beautiful chapel and the Duke Forest surrounding it. And you know that Duke is one of consistently ranked one of the top 15 schools in the United States and is a very prestigious hub for research. But on the right here, I want to show you our brand new campus. This is the Duke Kunshan campus. Um, and as a Duke Kunshan student, you have an opportunity to study on both campuses in two countries, the United States and China, and earn two degrees. As I said before, Duke University is internationally known and ranked one of the best schools in the world. Um, and as a Duke Kunshan student, when you graduate, you have a regular Duke University diploma and you join um, two alumni networks. So you would join the Duke University alumni network with over 170,000 members. And then of course you would join um, your uh, classmates that you graduated with in China from all over the world. So where is Duke Kunshan located? Duke Kunshan is an extremely strategic location within Asia. Um, we are actually located very near Shanghai. 
So to get there, you would fly into Shanghai Puyang Airport. For those of you who are from um, <clears throat> maybe the Chicago area um, or anyone from Illinois probably flies out of O'Hare, they do have direct flights into Shanghai. And we're a very quick train ride, about 20 minutes to Kunshan. Um, you can also drive there. And so Duke Kunshan University came about because Duke University and China wanted to come together um, to start this um, brand new innovative research oriented liberal arts and sciences university for students who really want to make um, a meaningful difference in the world. And here are just some more beautiful photos of the brand new modern campus. We like to say that Duke Kunshan University is your gateway to Asia and the rest of the world. Um, so just as Switzerland is a location where you can get to so many countries really quickly, um, if you study near Shanghai, um, you're just a quick plane ride to so many other amazing locations within Asia. Um, you can get to um, Japan in just a couple of hours, um, Korea. Um, some of our students like to take weekends and go to places like Bali or Thailand. So attending Duke Kunshan University really opens up um, your options for exploring Asia. So more about Kunshan specifically. So um, Kunshan is a hub for high-tech research and manufacturing. As I said, it's connected by high-speed train to Shanghai, and then also to Suzhou. And these are two of China's most dynamic cities. It has a population that's considered small for China of about 1.7 million, um, but it is growing. So you might liken Kunshan to a place like Silicon Valley um, in California. And so um, Kunshan is, of course, a very modern city, like I said, a hub for innovation. But also the wonderful thing is, is that you're so close to so many other um, historic um, areas. So um, we're located within Jiangsu province, which um, is really beautiful. It has these picturesque forests and water towns. So you can explore that just a few um, minutes off campus. And then, of course, like I said, you can take a quick train ride into Shanghai. And I just um, bring this photo to show the amazing skyline. And then as a Duke Kunshan student, um, a part of your experience, in addition to studying in China, would be studying in uh, Durham, North Carolina, on the Duke University campus. So as a Duke Kunshan student, you would go away to college in China you spend most of your time there, but you have the opportunity to spend one semester um, or junior year um, at, at the Duke University campus. So we also have a really neat course schedule. We have a 4-1 academic week where we have classes in the classroom um, Monday through Thursday and Fridays are reserved for things like internships, field trips, travel, we also have an innovative semester schedule where instead of having, um, you know, taking four, five, six classes at once throughout the semester, um, we, you still um, attend school within the bounds of a normal semester on the calendar. But within that, you take two mini sessions and only take two to three classes at a time. So you can really focus in on what you're learning. We're also an incredibly um, research focused um, university and 20% of our undergraduates have already conducted some sort of research with a professor. And I have a question here, and this is a great question. Are classes all going to be taught in English? And that's the first thing I should have shared. Yes, all of the classes are in English, but a big part of being a Duke Kunshan student is learning Mandarin. So all students take um, two years of Mandarin language study. And the idea is that they'll be proficient when they graduate. So here is a list of our majors, and I um, encourage you to take a screenshot if you would like to. And um, we also have an incredibly diverse student body um, from 50, nas 50 plus nationalities in six continents. And we're looking for students who are really globally minded, adventurous, um, open minded, fascinated with China and the rest of the world.
So you're welcome to apply via the Common App. And keep in mind that we also have extremely competitive financial aid offers and 80% of our incoming international students receive some sort of aid. So you're also welcome to take a tour of campus with one of our current students. And then I just like to end on this photo. This is a photo from 2019 for our admitted student experience when we invited all of our admitted students from all over, all over the world um, to enjoy the Duke Kunshan campus. And we're hoping to do that again, um, just as soon as it's safe with the pandemic. So you're welcome to check us out on social media or email our um, international admissions um, account. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you so much. Our next presenter is the University of Alabama in Huntsville. Hi, everybody. Let me just share my screen really quickly. Um, there we go. So my name is Allie Eason. I am your admissions counselor from the University of Alabama in Huntsville. So we're just going to go over some basic UAH information today. So just a little bit about UAH. We were founded in 1950. We were a branch of the University of Alabama, but we became our own autonomous campus and university in 1969. Um, we have about 10,000 students. So this was our sixth year of record enrollment. And so we just hit that threshold and we are still growing. Um, and then just a couple of fun facts about UAH. UAH graduates rank number one in Alabama for early career pay. So that just means uh, UAH students have an entry level sal salary that is on average higher than students that have attended other universities in the state. We also rank number one return on investment for both in and out of state students. So whatever you're putting in with your like with your tuition, your fees, all of that, you're going to see back later with your career pay. So we are a quality institution. We have seven academic colleges and 100 plus areas of study, but our more unique uh, academic programs in, uh, include aerospace engineering, astronomy and astrophysics, atmospheric science and meteorology, cybersecurity, which we have actually two programs, one under our College of Engineering and the other under our College of Business and our digital animation major. So we are a top research university. We are ranked 11 in NASA funded research expenditures. We have about, we have about 109 million in research and development expenditures, and we have 17 high tech research centers and labs on our campus. We're also an anchor tenant of Cummings Research Park, which is the second largest research park in the nation and the fourth largest in the world. So you're going to see companies like Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, Boeing, uh, Northrop Grumman, Blue Origin, and more, all like five minutes from our campus. We also have the Marshall Space Flight Center, which is one of NASA's largest centers. And we also have our Redstone Arsenal, which is our military base, which houses the FBI, Department of Defense, and other government sectors. So this goes into our co-op and internship opportunities. So our Office of Career Services works with our students from day one um, to make sure that you're reaching your professional goals, right? So they do that through our career fair, which they host twice a year with 100 plus employers from uh, the region, which you can see in the background picture, um, Boeing attends. So what's great about the career fair is you're going to be able to go in, hand on your resume and network with these companies. You're going to see these people face to face. And in some cases, you will even interview the same week for the positions that they're looking to fill. So a little bit about our student life. Um, we have a pretty small average class size. We have about 35 students with a student to faculty ratio of 18 to one. So what this means is you're just gonna get a more intimate classroom setting, right? So you're gonna more likely get your questions answered. You're gonna be able to have more one-on-one -on -one time with your professor, go to their office hours. Um, so it's just gonna give you a better, um, a better opportunity to kind of learn in a more interactive way um, instead of more in a lecture setting. Um, and then a little bit about our actual student life. We have over 185 student run organizations that range from being academic focused to special interests and hobbies and even Greek life if that is what you're interested in. 
and a little about our on-campus living um, because who doesn't want to know where you're going to live. Um, we do require our students outside of a 30 mile radius to live on campus for their first year and we have what you call suite style living. So in a suite there's four bedrooms and two bathrooms and the good news is you're going to get your own bedroom. You don't have to share a bedroom with anyone. You're going to have your own privacy. You'll share a bathroom with one other person so there aren't like those community bathrooms on each floor. You're going to get your own private bathroom. Um, um, there will be a living room and a kitchenette. In the kitchenette, there will be a mid to full size refrigerator, a microwave and a sink, some counter space and cabinet space. But if you're really into cooking, I know meal prep is really big nowadays. We do have fully functioning kitchens in every residence hall and we also have laundry facilities as well. So you don't have to worry about how you're gonna get your laundry done. So our uh, application process is fairly simple. Um, we don't do common app, but our uh, institutional application takes 10 to 20 minutes tops. Um, so you're going to want to go to uah.edu backslash apply. There is a $30 application fee. However, um, if you're worried about that fee, please reach out to me because I can give you a fee waiver code. Um, we do require our students submit official high school transcripts. If you're taking dual enrollment classes, we want to make sure we get those college transcripts as well so we can get you that credit. Um, and then we also would like to see your ACT and SAT test scores. So I did want to go over our scholarships, our out-of-state academic scholarships. Um, they're based on merit. And so as you can see, it's a fairly simple grid. Um, it is updated every summer. So our scholarship uh, committee will go through and update it. So if you're a junior or sophomore, it might look a little bit different, but this is how um, you, it'll, you'll be able to read it once it does uh, get published for the 2022 to 2023 academic year. Um, so you can see it starts with a 3.0 GPA and a 25 on the ACT or 1200 on the SAT and you can get it starts out at $11,000 and goes all the way up to 22,000 um, and it, you also get a, a year of university housing for free if you get that 36 and that 40. Um, so it's a fairly easy grid. Um, this is a great reference to kind of see where you might fall come, uh, come the time you need to apply. Um, but we are very generous with our academic uh, scholarships. And so what's great about this is that you don't have to apply for it. Um, it's not a separate application pro uh, process. It's if you are admitted and you qualify, you're gonna automatically receive that scholarship. And so that's just a little bit about UAH. I'd be happy to answer any questions in the Q&A if you have any of uh, any questions, but there's my contact information, which I will also be putting in the chat. And I just want to thank you guys so much for your time today. And it was great getting to talk to you. Thank you so much. Our next presenter is Kaiser University. Hello, my name is uh, John Bowman. I am with Kaiser University. So I am going to go ahead and just uh, share my screen really quickly here. And I do want to congratulate everybody else on uh, tremendous presentations. I, I can tell that there's a lot of great uh, opportunity here for uh, the students. So um, actually let me Can everybody see my screen? I'm having trouble here. Can, uh, we can see it. Um, it isn't in the presentation mode. Okay. There you go. Uh, great. So I'm going to uh, skip forward here a little bit. Uh, we were founded in 1977. Um, so we have uh, campuses in Florida, Nicaragua, and Shanghai. We actually have 21 campuses in the state of Florida with 20,000 students. Uh, we are the second largest private not-for-profit university in the state of Florida. Uh, we do have uh, two campuses in China and uh, a residential campus as well in Managua, Nicaragua. Uh, we are accredited through the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools all the way through a level six. So we do offer doctoral degree programs, uh, over 100 different majors uh, as well. 
Um, we do offer online uh, plus on campus with a hybrid. Uh, we've been doing a lot of that, although we've stayed uh, open uh, throughout the pandemic. Um, we have uh, continued to grow a lot through our, our online and hybrid uh, programs. Uh, so we've been uh, uh, very blessed and um, you know, have, have continued to uh, enroll more and more students uh, into our program. Uh, we are a, a career focused university. So what that means is we focus mostly on areas we feel very strongly that we can place our students, uh, things like business and IT and medical and um, uh, you know, criminal justice. These are areas where uh, we've experienced a, a, a great need uh, and we work very closely with the community to make sure that we are offering programs uh, where when our students graduate, uh, they are going to be highly in demand with their skill sets. So you can see here, um, we do have 29 athletic teams. Uh, so we compete in the NAIA. Uh, in fact, we are very competitive. We've won six national championships in the last five years, uh, three in men's swimming, two in women's golf, and one in, in uh, women's soccer. Uh, we are nationally ranked in practically every sport in which we compete. Uh, we, our football team has gone undefeated the last two regular seasons and getting ready to compete in the national tournament um, in April. Uh, so we're very excited about uh, the prospect. If anybody is an athlete, uh, please let us know, definitely. Um, we have a lot of programs that are focused on areas of athletics as well, like sport management, sports medicine, exercise science. Um, these are all geared to towards our graduate uh, degree program, our graduate level programs. Uh, so students can stay with Kaiser and continue on and um, you know, be able to be very, very successful at the graduate level as well. Uh, we are the number one producer of nurses uh, in the state of Florida, just an FYI. Um, and we're perennially in the top five in the country. So you can see here, uh, as far as our academic overview, uh, you can see uh, we do have 87% of our faculty are full time. So what that means as a benefit to the student, obviously, is that the faculty are fully vested in the well being and the growth of the university. Uh, we have a small average class size uh, that really should be more like 15 uh, to one for the undergrad as well for our particular campus. Um, but uh, during the pandemic, of course, it's been a, a little bit lower because we've had that hybrid where uh, students are virtual as well as on campus. So the current student to teacher ratio uh, physically is about eight to one. Uh, so I always tell students you should never leave a classroom with questions unanswered. Um, also too, our faculty takes the time after class typically or before class for students to be able to meet with them. Uh, the average GPA on our campus is a 3.3. Uh, so we have tutoring centers that are available uh, at no additional charge to the students. So I always tell students, if you're not using that resource, you're not taking advantage of something that's available to you. Uh, we also have a writing center. Uh, so we do everything that we can to ensure the success, the academic success of our students. So um, we take great pride in that. Our graduation rates are uh, some of the highest in the state. And uh, of course, our job placement rates uh, are, are extremely high as well. Uh, much of that, again, uh, to do with our, our career education focus and also having advisory boards made up of local employers um, who it's their job to ensure that our students uh, get the type of education that they need in order to hire them. So in other words, they help with our curriculum. Uh, they, they advise us on practically everything that you can imagine uh, that takes place in our classroom. So you can see here again, some of the programs, uh, we do have a specialty in equine studies. Uh, so that falls within uh, our biomedical program. It's really a pre-veterinary program for large animals. Um, so it focuses of course on equine studies, uh, so horses uh, specifically. Uh, we also have a riding team. You do not have to be in equine studies to be on the riding team, um, but that there is a lot of crossover obviously there. I had mentioned uh, exercise science and health and human uh, performance, golf management is a very large program for us. And again, a specialty program. Uh, cinematic arts, I wanted to mention again, is a specialty program. Uh, so again, uh, besides in-demand career uh, choices, we have a lot of specialty programs uh, as well. 
So um, as far as scholarships go, we do, uh, again, as many of the other institutions have mentioned, uh, base much of our uh, institutional scholarship decisions on merit. Uh, so once you've submitted an application, we need to see your transcripts. Once we see your transcripts, we do take the entire student into consideration. So in other, way, in other words, we are ACT, SAT optional. Um, we look at GPA, we do look at test scores if you've taken them. Uh, we also uh, weigh very heavily on the interview side. Uh, while we are large as an institution with 20,000 students, each campus is pretty small. Uh, we're a campus of about 1,300. Uh, so we are able to give that specialized attention to the student. Uh, and really, the again, the, the interview, a lot goes into that. Uh, you spend a lot of time with your admissions officer. Uh, you also get a financial aid officer that works directly with you as well as an academic officer. So all three of us work together. To, to try to make your experience throughout the enrollment process as simple as possible. But again, the enrollment officer is going to spend a lot of time with you, uh, either by Zoom or by phone or, um, you know, through tours uh, to be able to make sure that we're the right institution for you, you're the right student for us. And, and we want to make sure that you're walking across the stage and receiving your diploma in four years. So we're going to work very, very hard for that. Okay, so... Uh, that really is uh, about it. Um, I appreciate everybody's attention uh, this evening, and um, I look forward to uh, hearing from some of you in the future, I hope. So thanks very much. Thank you so much. Our next presenter is Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Thank you. Uh, so I'll go ahead and share my screen. So um, hi, everyone. So my name is Rebecca. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions over at Embry-Riddle. Um, so just to get started, uh, we do have three different campuses at Embry-Riddle, uh, two of which are residential. So um, if you are looking to come onto campus, learn in person, um, and live on campus as well, uh, we do have locations uh, in both Daytona Beach, Florida, and also Prescott, Arizona. Um, obviously, two pretty different um, environments, so you really do have your choice um, about which location you prefer. Um, just geography wise with our Daytona Beach campus, uh, we're about an hour from Orlando, um, right on the east coast of Florida. So we're just about 10 minutes from the beach. Um, so if you like the sunshine um, and warm weather, uh, you can basically get it um, at Daytona. Um, I believe it was about 80 degrees and sunny here today, like most days um, throughout the year, um, not just um, in the springtime. Um, but we have a great location about an hour from Kennedy Space Center as well. Um, we are actually literally adjacent to the Daytona Beach International Airport. So um, obviously one of the programs we're very well known for is our flight program. Um, so for our flight students, they can quite literally walk to all their flights. Um, and it's super convenient for any out-of-state student to be able to fly to Daytona Beach um, and come right to campus. Um, our Prescott, Arizona campus is a little bit, has a little bit more elevation uh, than we do here in Florida. Um, so if you're someone that likes mountain biking or hiking, um, then that could be a great location for you. Um, very similar to Daytona Beach. Uh, they're about an hour and a half from Phoenix. So um, they're also very close to a larger city, um, but also have their own little community um, in Prescott uh, themselves. Um, just size on campus, um, our Daytona Beach campus is just about 7,000 students um, and our Prescott campus is just about 3,000 3, students. Um, and our worldwide campus is actually our online campus. So if you are looking to do a degree online, um, you can also do so through one of our worldwide online campuses. Um, so as some of the other presenters also mentioned about their universities, you do get very much a tangible experience while attending Embry-Riddle. So um, even though our Daytona Beach campus is about twice the size as Prescott, um, our average class size is about the same. So our average class size at Daytona is about 27 students, uh, where our average class size at Prescott is about 24. Um, a unique component of our academics um, is definitely something I like to mention in that um, all of our classes are only ever taught by professors. Um, classes are never going to be taught by graduate assistants or teaching assistants. Um, so this is really helpful for our students to get a really hands-on experience on campus, especially with the type of programs that we offer being so hands-on. Um, you'll be taught by people, by professors that actually have industry experience. Um, so they actually have real life application to what they're teaching. Um, and then also, um, of course, can serve as connections for you as you look to go into those similar industries. 
Um, so not only do they help you in the classroom, they can most definitely help you outside of the classroom as well, uh, whether it's with research, letters of recommendations, finding jobs, um, so on and so forth. So uh, especially also being in such small classes, uh, you really get to know your professors. Um, they will know your name. They'll know when you're not in class. Um, they'll, you'll see them across campus. So um, it's definitely a great um, experience for academics, which of course is the number one reason why uh, you'll be coming to Embry-Riddle. Um, and with that, um, I also like to mention that even starting in our admissions process, which I'll touch on at the end, um, you actually do by applying to Embry-Riddle, you actually apply directly to a specific de degree program that you're interested in. So if you get accepted, you're actually accepted directly into the degree program that you apply to. So you're actually gonna be starting to take classes related to your major right from your first semester on campus. So um, it really just allows you to really take advantage of the time that you're at Embry-Riddle um, to actually study what you want to be there for. Um, so that really is an opportunity for you to be able to get a head start um, among other students, uh, potentially get job experience or internship experience that much sooner. Uh, because by the time you set foot on campus, uh, you'll be able to start that hands-on tangible experience. Um, and obviously that does also translate to our placement rate as well. Uh, so 96% of our students within a year of graduation go on to grad school or get a job directly related to what they studied at Embry-Riddle. So even under those criteria, um, we're pretty close to perfect, um, but the remaining 4% may very well be students that also get a job within a year of graduation and may also be very happy in their job. Maybe it just doesn't directly relate to what they studied at Embry-Riddle. So even with that, we're still pretty close to perfect. Um, and we are also much more than just academics. Um, so of course, uh, we, as you can see, we offer 350 plus clubs and organizations on campus as well. Um, so similar to other schools, uh, these clubs and organizations range from special interest clubs and organizations. Uh, one of the most popular clubs being our skydiving club, um, but also ranging between athletics, um, ROTC, uh, academic related organizations. So um, just to touch on a little bit more of each of some different ways to get involved. Um, so athletics, uh, we are a Division II school. Our Daytona Beach campus is NCAA Division II with nine men's sports and 11 women's sports. And then our Prescott, Arizona campus is NAIA Division II with five men's sports and six women's sports. Um, so if you are interested in playing a sport at Embry-Riddle, um, a Division II sport, uh, definitely let us know and we can make sure to connect you in the right place. Uh, but we do also offer club and intramural sports as well. Uh, we also do have study abroad opportunities. So if you actually wanted to um, spend the majority of your time um, on the, a residential campus, uh, but then take a semester um, or maybe even more to actually study abroad in a different country, um, it's definitely a great opportunity to immerse yourself um, into a different culture and get a wider worldview. Um, like I briefly mentioned before, we also offer ROTC. Our Daytona Beach campus has all four branches of ROTC. Um, and our Prescott, Arizona campus does have both the Air Force and Army ROTC options. Um, these branches do tend to uh, offer pretty hefty scholarships. So if you were interested in ROTC and applying to a scholarship, um, they typically open about the springtime of your junior year. Um, so definitely be on the lookout and be in contact with those uh, detachments to make sure that you apply to those scholarships if you are interested, but you don't have to be a scho on scholarship to be a part of ROTC either. Uh, we do also offer Greek life, um, and I definitely love to emphasize it's not what you see in the movies, um, so definitely, um, you know, be a part of it if that's what you're involved in. Um, here you can see um, a brief glimpse of our programs and some notable programs that we do offer. Aeronautical science is our flight program, uh, but I won't go too much into detail um, to save time, but our application process, we're also not on the common apps. So you'll need to apply directly on our website. Please only submit one application to one campus. Um, and you can use the DBPC fee waiver code to not pay the $50 application fee. And we will also need your high school transcripts after you do submit your application. So make sure you do send those to us. Um, we are also- Wait, SSC Sorry to jump in. Optional. Hi, know, sorry, we okay. need to jump over to our next school. Okay, no worries. <laughs> so here's our <laughs> contact information for any questions. Thank you so much. Our next presenter is uh, University of Tennessee. Hello, let me get my screen ready. Okay, hi, yes, my name is Courtney and I'm the Midwest Regional Rep for the University of Tennessee located in Knoxville, Tennessee. 
So I'm first going to talk a little bit about Knoxville. We are located in eastern Tennessee, and we've been coined a nature-loving, adventure-seeking, artsy kind of town. So if you like the outdoors, we've got you covered. If you don't, you probably will. Uh, Great Smoky Mountains National Park is less than 45 minutes from our campus. So right in your backyard, right along our campus is the Tennessee River. So there's tons of opportunities for kayaking, paddle boarding, tons of greenways for running, biking, um, tons of stuff to do outdoors. We also have a vibrant and historic downtown region. So there's plenty of shops, restaurants, cool things to do not far from campus. It's walkable and we do have a free trolley system that students can utilize as well. So lively food scene, music scene, things to keep you entertained um, when you're not studying. So a little bit about the university itself. We are Tennessee's flagship institution. So we were founded in 1794. We we're the first public university west of the Appalachian Divide. And we believe in our volunteer tradition. So we are the Tennessee volunteers and that's something we uh, take true to heart and we fully believe in service above self. So you'll find a lot of traditions at uh, Tennessee and people are very proud to call themselves uh, a volunteer. We are a research one Carnegie classification. So that's top tier for research. And we have a lot of options and opportunities for students to participate in research and get that experience to build a resume um, and credibility. We have the most Goldwater scholars this past year. So we are very proud of that and what we produce. We are top producing university for Fulbright scholars. Um, we're top in the SEC for the past three years. So again, uh, these volunteer traditions go from academics to athletics to, to so many things that we take a lot of pride in. We have the UT Space Institute, which is part of our campus. We have produced 10 astronauts and we have students that work for NASA as well. We do have an aerospace um, engineering program. So a lot of good opportunities with our UT Space Institute and we co-manage the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. So we are one of less than 10 universities that have the privilege to co-manage a national lab. Um, that national lab is located less than 30 minutes from our campus. So again, lots of hands-on experience getting that research one Carnegie classification and um, putting students to work with research. We are division one athletics and part of the SEC athletic conference. We're a mid-sized institution with over 24,000 undergraduate students. We have over 600 student organizations you can get involved in and over 360 majors to choose from. So there's plenty of options to get involved, to study and, and make your mark as a volunteer. We have nine colleges uh, within our undergraduate programs. We've got our Herbert College of Agriculture. We do have a pre-vet track. Um, and horticulture um, are hosted there. We have College of Architecture and Design. This is a competitive program that does require separate admissions review. Our College of Arts and Sciences is gonna be our largest college that's gonna host the majors that kind of don't fit into the other universities. We do offer neuroscience. Our School of Music is located within there and your psychology, pre-med, um, biology, chemistry majors are gonna be housed there. Our Haslam College of Business is one of our uh, notable colleges, produce uh, great students, awesome internship opportunities, awesome networking opportunity with our alumni and businesses. And there are several uh, companies headquartered in Knoxville, so you can get good hands-on experience right on campus as well. College of Communication and Information houses journalism, PR, our communication major. College of Education, Health and Human Sciences. If you're looking to become a teacher, if you're wanting to study speech pathology, uh, nutrition, kinesiology, they're gonna be housed there. Our Tickle College of Engineering, another well-known, well-established uh, college at the university um, houses, as I mentioned, aeronautical. We are well known for nuclear and um, we offer all sorts of, of engineering, computer science, computer engineering are all located within there. That also has great hands-on experience with our lab, our makers labs. And um, we also offer paid co-ops and internships. So students have the opportunity to get paid for work, building their resume while they're taking courses. We have our College of Nursing, which is a direct admit entry. So you would apply to admission to the university and get that direct admit through nursing. And then our College of Social Work. 
the Tennessee student experience. So um, we always talk about how we're, you know, a bigger mid-sized university, but you can make it feel small by finding your niche and finding your fit on campus. We have our Center for Career Development and Academic Exploration that helps you look for internship opportunities, network, meet with alumni. Um, so they are great with preparing you for your future after the university. And then every new incoming student gets their own Vol success team. So what this is, is you get an academic counselor, you get a career coach, and a, what we call a one-stop counselor who helps with financial aid, billing, things like that. So you'll have three people that are coaches for you as a new student at the University of Tennessee. So they can really help with that transition and help you flourish and do well while you're at Tennessee. We have living learning communities in around 13 different residence halls on campus. We do require our first year students to live on campus. We have three housing styles, suite style, apartment style, and community styles. So you can choose from those. Um, and again, we build a lot of networking and programming into the housing experience so students really can get engaged. We have over 600 clubs and organizations, intramural club sports, sorority and fraternity life are very popular. And then again, we're of course, we're D1 um, athletics. So there's always something to do and get involved in. And studying abroad is very popular on our campus with over 50 countries and two full weeks. So I know my time's wrapping up. You can apply on our website or you can apply via Common App. We're looking at high school rig year, GPA, senior coursework, and that volunteer experience since we are the volunteers. Pay attention to our deadlines. We're 43,000 for out of state, but we offer scholarships from 4,000 to 18,000. You can visit and there's my contact information. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you everyone. We've hit our time here. I uh, just wanna thank you for joining. On your way out, there is a quick survey with four questions. We'd love your feedback. Please sign up for more sessions. And this recording will be available in about a week at strivescan.com backslash Illinois. And with that, thank you so much to all of our presenters and uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us tonight. Bye everyone.